In this video, we're going to start refining and controlling the math further than what we've generated out of our GMAS tracer. Bringing my cursor over this viewport here, I'll hit F4 again. Now, we're looking at the actual comp out here, even though there's not a technically, there's not an output here. That's because down inside of our editing panel, with the output for the guy selected, notice that your output selections, I'm selected on comp. Make sure you're selected on mat as the primary. And now if I hit F4, I'll toggle between looking at the woman's mat and then the guy's mat. So as I said, let's start refining these. They're very different mats, and this is why we separated them, so we can refine them. She's got a soft blurred edge. He's got a pretty sharp edge. So we'll use some different tools to finesse it. So let's go back to our effects nodes. I'll bring my cursor over my bin, and I'll hit the M key. I want to take a matte edge tool, so I grab it, drag it, drew into my schematic. Let me zoom back a little bit, control space bar. With that matte edge selected, I hold option, hit the shift key, and I'll kiss the front input of my matte edge to the guy output. Now looking at this viewport, it says no matte. Well, that's because we were toggling between looking at the two different mats that were coming out of the GMAS tracer, and the matte edge tool only has one output. So just bring your cursor over this viewport and hit the F4 key if you're not seeing the matte edge end result here. I'll double click on my matte edge tool to get the parameters down in our editing panel, and you'll see several different parameters and options and tools that I'm sure you are very familiar with such as your edge controls. If you wanted to just pick out an edge and isolate the edge, you can do that and you have control over that. But then there's also shrink, there's a road, blur, and we got a matte luminance curve here. What I wanna do here is use the road option. So let me zoom in a little bit on the edge. So these are the areas that I'm concerned about. So if I click on the road, you'll see immediately we are starting to erode the mat. Pretty straightforward. And 2.67 is a little harsh, a little more erosion than I really want, so I'll click in the field here and just enter 2, hit enter. That's better. That's going to help me out. Also notice auto key is off. Um, I'm not sure if you have it on. By default, I believe it should be off. If it's on, turn it off, only because we don't want to be creating keyframes unnecessarily. I'll zoom back a little bit so we can see what we're doing again. And again, just for organization, I'm going to come to my node name field here, get rid of where it reads 72 underscore G-U-Y guy, hit return. So now I know when I look into my schematic, that's the guy's matte edge tool. But now we want to use a matte edge for the girl. So I'm going to right click on this and just choose duplicate. Now new matte edge is created. I'll hold option shift connected to the female, the girl matte output. Double click on that to get its parameters if they're not showing. In this case, we're going to really crank this road up. So I'm going to start dragging this up, looking at the viewport. Yeah, let's take this pretty high. Let's go up to about 20 and see what that looks like. Okay, I'm liking this. This is holding that soft edge. We're eroding into it pretty nice. Remember, she's blurred in the scene. So it's okay if there's a little more erosion happening inside of this. So I'm happy with that, but let's rename this one. Obviously, we don't want this name Guy, so I'll just get rid of that and name Girl. So now we have our matte edge girl, our matte edge guy. Now, we obviously have a little more work to do on our two mats. Let's start working on our color, the RGB of this image. And later on, we'll apply our mats to that image. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of the green spill. There's a lot of green spill happening in this image. And again, in Flame, there are several different tools we could use to do that. But I'm going to use a master keyer because if you remember, we looked at it earlier and it had built-in color suppression inside that tool. So I'll hit the M key. I'll take a master keyer, drag it into my schematic. I'm going to hold the shift key and then I'm going to take this node and by starting with the blue matte input, I'm going to kiss and connect that to the main result output and then the background green and the red. So all three of them are now being fed by the main output of our image node, the clip node. Double click on our master keyer. We did look at the master keyer a little earlier and we understand the workflow. What I'm doing here is not really worrying about pulling the mat. We're going to use this and this for our mat if we refine it even a little bit more. But I want to use this for these tools right here, the color suppression tools that are automatically going to take place once we start to pull the key. So I'm going to click in the key color over here on the left. You'll see my cursor switches to a picker. I click and drag in the viewport. It populates both of those key colors with the green. Also notice that auto CC is on. 
and that color that I sampled of the green is now added into the pot, the color pot for the spill. It's kind of hard to tell, but we've already suppressed the green. Example, let me zoom in, control space for it. Let's go on the guy here, because I think this is going to be pretty obvious. Looking at him in the screen, I'll come down in the UI where you'll see bypass. Now, keeping your eye on the screen and the guy, as I turn bypass on and off, you're going to see all the green spill that is being suppressed automatically with this tool. That's a lot of green spill happening in his jacket, on his skin. I turn bypass off, and you can see that we've pulled all that green out of there. Now we can take this further with our color suppression because we've got a color trackball here. And the concept of this is we adjust this color trackball and the spill that's been removed will be color corrected based on the adjustment that we make. Now I'll do this drastic for demonstration first. I'm just going to drag this way up into the red. You can see the image of the guy turning red. I'll go way down into blue. Now he's shifting into blue and green and so on. Well, we don't want to go green. We're trying to pull the green out of there. So again, I'm doing this very drastically just for demonstration, but this is what's great about the color suppression tool. Let me hit Control Z to undo that. I don't want it that drastic, but I do want to warm it up just a little bit. So I'll bring my cursor over to trackball. I'll drag straight up into the orange warmer area until I see about 40, 43, 42, somewhere around there. Looking at the screen, I kind of like that. Enabling and disabling bypass. You can really see the changes we just made as far as the color spill inside the image. As we keep adding tools, obviously our schematic is going to get kind of complicated. So there's a feature called an elbow that allows you to manipulate the connection lines for organization. If I go over to my tools, and you'll see where it reads add points. Now you can use this with the masks as we did earlier, but when I choose that tool and I come into my schematic and I'll click on the red connection line, I'll hit M key then to go back to my selection tool. And then I can manipulate that elbow, position it where I want it to be to help organize my nodes as I'm working. Let me zoom back in this viewport. I'll just hit the fit button so you can see both mats are still there. What's also great about this elbow, I don't need it now, but maybe later, is you can have multiple outputs being fed off of that elbow if you wanted to. You can also add an elbow automatically in a case where you have multiple outputs coming out of this. It's a nice hotkey, actually. I hit the A key to access the Add Points tool, and then I click directly on the output, and it will add an elbow directly from there while maintaining all of your connections. So now I hit the M key to get back to my Select tool, and I can move this up here and move this over there. So now I can start to organize my flow. And since this elbow was already attached to that output, maybe I don't want that. Maybe I don't want to click back on that yellow output, the result, and add that to the elbow down here just as an organizational tool. But that's a great hotkey. Hit the A key to access the Add tool and then clicking on the output. All right, I want to start finessing our image, our RGB information a little more. So let's go back to our effects node. And I'm going to use the Color Warper tool again. We looked at it a little earlier, but let's take that tool. I'll drag it up, hold the Option Shift, and connect the front input to the Master Keyer's main output. And double click on the Color Warper to get its parameters. Also, you get a 2D scope inside the viewport for the Color Warper tool. If you want to ever move that around, just like the navigator in the schematic that I showed earlier, hold the Option or Alt key, and you can reposition this so if it's in your way or what area you're looking at, you also have preferences for the scope if you want to access them. If you remember earlier, I talked about node preferences down here in our editing panel. We have the, the batch preferences. This is about batch itself. But right below that, we have the node preferences. And whatever tool you have selected, in this case, the color warper, the preferences in the node preference will obviously be relevant to that. Here, you can switch your scope from being 2D to a 3D scope if you want. You can also decide if you don't want the canvas on and off, the lines on or off, source, destination, and the size, and so on. So these are your preferences for the color warper, which really only affect the scope. Let me get rid of my note preferences there. Now the color warper, we can spend a good hour or more just discussing this tool individually if we wanted to, but in this video, we're going to focus on exactly what we want to achieve and use it to do just that. But we are going to talk about different areas, like this over here, where it reads Work On. They're going to be focusing on that. And this is also going to let us choose whether we're looking on a selective. Right now, we're looking at a master. And we have our colored trackballs for our shadows, our midtones, our highlights. We're going to be utilizing these. 
Below that, we have several different sliders for affecting our black, our white, our hue, saturation, gamma, and so on. Over on this right side of our histogram here, we see the selective and the defined parameters, which we're going to utilize to pull mats. That's what this color warper allows you to do, is pull three different mats to selectively color correct your image. We'll be utilizing this with the color cube right next to it. And then the center part is where you access your warp controls, but also your gamma, your suppress, your saturation. These will all be adjusted here, depending upon what you're actually looking at. Now I want to create two selective color corrections, one for his skin tone and one for his jacket and maybe his hair, because they're pretty similar in color. And then on top of that, we can make an adjustment to the master, which affects everything. But right now, you see where it says work on, we're affecting the master. So any adjustment that I make, let's say I make some adjustments to the warp trackball, it's going to affect everything. It's going to affect every single pixel. Control Z to undo that. So I want to create a selective. So let's go over to where it reads work on. I click the flyout that reads master. I choose selective one because now the defined parameters have all become available to me. If I wanted to use a default defined such as shadows, you'll notice that only the shadows are now being selected. Midtones, highlights, these will automatically pull a mat based on those different ranges. You also have red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow that you can use as a, a preset define. But as I was clicking and choosing any one of the preset defines, over in our color cube, you saw these two triangle diamond shapes, if you will, jumping and moving around because if I'm going to be isolating the blue to pull a mat, I click blue, the B for blue, you'll notice that that's gonna jump over to where blue is. If I click M for magenta, it's obviously gonna jump to where the magenta is. Let me click the reset button in the lower right corner to reset everything. And it's gonna set my work on back to master. So once again, I'll switch this to a selective to access my defined parameters. And now I wanna pick my own custom range. So you'll see the pick custom button. I enabled that and my cursor turns into a picker. This is gonna be for his jacket. I'll come into the viewport and I'm gonna hold the control key down and I'm gonna click and drag over a region on his jacket right there. Now a mat is being pulled based on the pixels that were inside my region I selected. You can see over in the color cube, my two diamond shapes have adjusted. One is for your tolerance and one is for your softness. I wanna adjust this a little bit, but I wanna be looking at the actual mat that we're pulling. So down where it reads view over here, I'm gonna switch from being selective to looking at the mat. Now we can see the mat that I've pulled. Here's where we're gonna start using this color cube area and these two diamond shapes to finesse the mat. As I mentioned earlier, one of these is the softness and one of these is your tolerance. The outside big one, that's your softness. If I clicked on the softness button, you can see we can enable to see it or not see it. So I'll grab one of the control points for my softness and start to bring it in a little bit. Like so. You can zoom in on this cube area by holding your control and spacebar and just click and drag just like you do in your viewport. Holding the spacebar allows you to pan around inside of this color cube area. And now I'll take my tolerance triangle and I can start to make adjustments to this watching in the viewport exactly what I'm going to be pulling here. I'm trying to get as much of his jacket as I can without affecting much of the skin tone. I can also add tolerance by clicking on the tolerance button, coming into the viewport and clicking and dragging in this area that I want to add to the actual mat. I'll take my softness and really start bringing this in, encompassing just this area to get rid of as much of the skin as I possibly can. And a lot of times, obviously, a tool like this, there's a little bit of finessing, there's a little bit of work you have to go through to end up getting the mat that we want. All right, this looks pretty good. As long as you've got something close to this, I'd be happy with it. The next thing I want to do is blur the mat a little bit. And you can see the blur option is enabled by default, but both my X and Y are set to zero. You can adjust these independently. They're set up actually as an independent adjustment. But if you hold shift and option and click on one, it's gonna, you're going to adjust both of them equally. Maybe I'll bring this to four, holding shift and option, maybe five. Let's go all the way up to six. I think six is good. So I've really softened and blurred the mat. Remember, this is a color correction we're performing. So I'm not worried if my edges are a little blurred. Now we want to switch what we're looking at. So I go over to where it says view again. I choose result from the flyout. And the first adjustment I want to make is I want to bring a cooler 
tone to the shadows inside the jacket. So I'll come over to my color trackball where it reads shadows and I'll drag down into the blue. Looking in the viewport while you make the adjustment, I'm going to bring this down to blue so I see the value of about 17 or so in the shadow trackball. And then I want to warm my highlights that are in the jacket a little bit. So we go over to the highlights color trackball and I'll drag this straight up into orange. Again, looking in the view, maybe to about 14. Yeah, that looks interesting. That's 10. Let's go a little bit more. Yeah, 14, 15, somewhere around there. Again, I can go and enable and disable the bypass to see the color correction I've performed on the jacket. You might think that's a pretty subtle adjustment, but those are the adjustments that really can make the shot. Especially when we combine this selective color correction with the other color adjustments we're about to make with this tool. Now I want to focus on his skin tone. So I'm going to come over where it reads work on and switch this to selective 2. Once again, the viewport's going to go gray. The define tools are now available to me once again for this selective. Before I try to pull this mat, let's come over to our color cube where it reads auto frame. Click on that flyout and choose home to recenter and position the size of our color cube. All right, now I'm going to choose pick custom again, and I'm going to come along the edge of his cheek here. I'm not holding a modifier key. I'm just going to click and drag just quickly over the edge of the cheek. Let's take a look at the mat. So I'll go to the viewing flyout and choose mat. And now you can see we've got a mat focused on his skin. I'll click the tolerance button to make sure that's active, and then click once on his lower part of his cheek. Then I want to blur this also. Hold the shift option, and let's just drag this to about two this time, very minor blur, doesn't have to be very strong on this one. Once again, I want to change what I'm looking at. I don't want to see the mat anymore. I'm happy with what I have. I'll go to the view flyout and choose result. And I want to use my gamma curves. So where it reads warp, I'll click on that and choose gamma to access the gamma curves. And then I'm going to just take the center control point for the gamma and just drag it straight up a little bit to warm up his skin a little bit. That's good enough right there. I'm happy with that, that looks good. Let's switch what we're working on to be the master because now any adjustment we make is going to affect the original incoming footage plus the two selective color corrections we just performed. We're gonna use the gamma curve again as the master adjustment. So I'll take my shadow control over here, start dragging it to the right to resample my shadows a little bit. Then I'll take my highlight control point I'll drag it down and just a little bit to the left to resample our highlights. So now if we enable and disable bypass, you can see how these subtle adjustments that we just did, whether in the selective or at the master level, has totally changed the image. Now I want this color correction that I just performed to only affect the guy. I don't want it affecting the image of the woman, her hair over here. We'll take the matte edge tool for the guy Drag the main result out into the matte input for the color warper. And when I select the color warper, and I'll hold the option key to move this over a little bit. Now, if I turn bypass on and off, you can see it's not affecting her whatsoever because we're using the guy matte with the matte input for the color warper. So once again, for organization, I select my color warper. I'll come over into the name field and name this guy. In the next video, we'll use another color correction tool to focus on our female talent.